Here we've got two graphs, a graph G and a graph H. Are these two graphs the same? Does G equal H? Well, certainly not, because they have different vertices, A, B, C, X, Y, Z, so they're not equal. They also don't quite look the same. The graph G is drawn to look like a path, whereas the graph H is drawn more in the form of a bipartite graph. However, despite these differences, we might take a close look at G and H and say that these two graphs have the same structure. We could say, look, both graphs just consist of a single path of length 2, so in some way they are the same graph, they have the same structure. The term we use for this relationship between two graphs is isomorphic, so we would say that the graph G is isomorphic to H, and we could write it like this. G is isomorphic to H, and this is a symmetric relation. We could also write that H is isomorphic to G. You'll probably agree that this seems like a pretty fundamental and basic idea of graph theory, one that we should definitely formalize, and that's what we'll be going over in today's Wrath of Math lesson. What does it mean for two graphs to be isomorphic? This is a viewer-requested video. I always appreciate those viewer requests, so be sure to leave yours down in the comments. I think the definition of isomorphic graphs can seem needlessly complicated. Just saying that these graphs have the same structure does a pretty good job of communicating what we mean. So before we jump straight to the definition of isomorphic graphs, let's just make sense of exactly what this definition needs to capture, and then I think it will make a lot of sense when we see the definition. We want to formalize the idea of these two graphs having the same structure. Well, what two things are graphs made of? Well, those would be, of course, vertices and edges. So if G is isomorphic to H, then certainly we should be able to match each vertex of G to a vertex of H such that, in some sense, each vertex in G plays the same role as the vertex that it's matched to in H. For example, the vertex B in G has two neighbors, and the vertex that B is matched to in H also has two neighbors. So, to start formalizing this idea, when we say that a graph G is isomorphic to a graph H, we're saying that there's some function that we could call phi that takes vertices from the graph G and sends them, or matches them up, to vertices in the isomorphic graph H. For example, the function we've drawn here could be represented like this. This notation shows us what phi does with each input vertex. A gets sent to X, and B gets sent to Y, and C gets sent to Z. Of course, we're not quite done formalizing this relationship yet. The function phi from the vertices of G to the vertices of the isomorphic graph H needs to have a few special properties. Firstly, no two vertices in G should be mapped to the same vertex in H. For example, we couldn't have the function send both A and B to the vertex X. I mean, we could do that if we wanted to, but that wouldn't be capturing the idea of these graphs having the same structure. If they have the same structure, then each distinct vertex of the graph G should be able to get matched up with a distinct vertex of H. The function should basically tell us how we can relabel the vertices of the graph H to make it equal to the graph G. So our special function phi should map distinct vertices in G to distinct vertices in H. This is called an injective function. What's another special property our function phi should have in order to make clear that G and H have the same structure? Well, certainly it should be the case that every vertex in H is getting mapped to by some vertex from G. If all the vertices of G are getting mapped to distinct vertices of H, but not every vertex of H is getting mapped to, then it must be the case that H has more vertices than G, in which case H obviously doesn't have the same structure as G. This property of a function that every element in its codomain, in this case the vertices of H, is getting mapped to, is called surjectivity. So this would be a surjective function. 
Quickly, let's recap these two properties. Our function phi should be injective, meaning distinct vertices of G should be mapped to distinct vertices of H. No two vertices of G should be mapped to the same vertex of H. Secondly, phi should be surjective, meaning every vertex of H should be getting matched to by some vertex of G. These two properties combined mean that there is an exact one-to-one -one correspondence between the vertices in G and the vertices in H. Every vertex of G is getting mapped to a distinct vertex of H, and every vertex of H is getting matched with some vertex of G. And a function that has these two properties is called a bijection, or a bijective function. Now we've pretty much taken care of matching up the vertices, but what about the edges? Well, here's the idea, and it's pretty simple. If two vertices in G are adjacent, then their corresponding vertices in H should also be adjacent. Similarly, if two vertices of G are not adjacent, there's no edge joining them, then their corresponding vertices in H should also not be joined by an edge. And we can easily describe this property in terms of our function phi. Any two vertices, V1 and V2 in G, should be adjacent if and only if their corresponding vertices, phi of V1 and phi of V2, are also adjacent in the graph H. And if a function like this exists from the vertices of G to the vertices of H, then they are isomorphic graphs, and this function is called an isomorphism. These properties fully describe the connection we should be able to make from the vertices of one graph to another if, in fact, they are isomorphic graphs. Now we're ready to look at the formal definition of isomorphic graphs. Two graphs, G and H, are isomorphic if there exists a bijection, a bijective function, phi, from the vertices of G to the vertices of H, such that two vertices are adjacent in G if and only if their corresponding vertices in H, phi of U and phi of V, are also adjacent, in which case we write this, meaning that G is isomorphic to H. Remember, the function phi being a bijection means that the vertices of G and the vertices of H have been put in a one-to-one -one correspondence. And saying that two vertices of G are adjacent, if and only if their corresponding vertices in H are adjacent, means that the function phi preserves adjacency and non-adjacency. If we stick two adjacent vertices into an isomorphism, then we're going to get two adjacent vertices out. And if we stick two non-adjacent vertices into an isomorphism, then we're going to get two non-adjacent vertices out. And that, my friends, is what isomorphic graphs are. Let's quickly take a look at a non-example. At a glance, we can all see that these two graphs do not have the same structure. But how would you use the definition of isomorphism to verify that? For convenience, let's go ahead and name these graphs G and H. If these graphs were isomorphic, then there would have to exist, of course, some isomorphism from the vertices of G to the vertices of H. And this isomorphism certainly would have to match three of the vertices of G, say VI, VJ, and VK, to the vertices X1, X2, and X3 of H. The isomorphism, of course, would also have to match up some other vertices, but we only need to talk about these three for a contradiction. Since x1, x2, and x3 form a 3 cycle in H, if phi is an isomorphism, then the corresponding vertices vi, vj, and vk in the graph G must also form a 3 cycle, but that is a contradiction because the graph G clearly has no 3 cycle. On another note, certainly for two graphs to be isomorphic, they must have the same number of vertices and edges. The graphs G and H do have the same number of vertices and edges, but that alone is not sufficient for the graphs to be isomorphic. But if G had a seventh edge, like one joining V5 and V2, then we could even more easily conclude that these graphs can't possibly be isomorphic since they don't have the same number of edges. 
Now that we know what isomorphic graphs are, we can really know exactly what we're talking about when we say that two graphs have the same structure. Here, for your viewing pleasure, are all of the non-isomorphic graphs of order 2, order 3, and order 4. I'll take this time to point out, if two graphs are isomorphic, of course, we might talk about the isomorphism between them that we were talking about earlier. To talk about a function that's matching up vertices between graphs, we need labels on the vertices. So that we can say, for example, the isomorphism takes the vertex V and sends it to the vertex A. Then, we say that two unlabeled graphs are isomorphic if they would be isomorphic under any labeling of their vertices. So I hope this video helped you understand what isomorphic graphs are. Let's real quick recap the definition one more time. Two graphs, G and H, are said to be isomorphic if there exists a function phi from the vertices of G to the vertices of H that matches their vertices up in a one-to-one -one correspondence, meaning that it is a bijective function, and the function preserves adjacency and non-adjacency of the vertices that we put into it. And such a special function between graphs is called an isomorphism. With all that said, here is an exercise to practice your understanding. Here are four graphs that we'll call A, B, C, and D. Let me know in the comments if you think either of these two pairs of graphs, A and B, or C and D, are isomorphic. If you think a pair is isomorphic, provide an isomorphism between them. And if you think a pair is not isomorphic, explain why. So let me know what you think in the comments, and I'll leave a solution in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math lessons on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Links to his music in the description. An reached for